Hi guys, in this video we're working through practice exam 1.2 in the fall 22 semester. And this is actually the midterm exam from fall 21. And I'm just going to start with question 3, which gets us into chapter 2 content on atoms and the periodic table. So the first question here says, how many oxygen atoms are present in three formula units of Fe2HPO43? And I'm actually going to go ahead and underline this three formula units and just write the number 3 here to remind myself that we're thinking about three of these, and I'm going to rewrite the formula a little bit larger here, Fe2HPO43 is that formula. So first let's take a look at a single formula unit of this ionic compound. We've got HPO4 anions in there, uh, HPO4 two minus anions, and the number of oxygen atoms within each of those anions is four, and there are three of those anions per formula unit. And so what we have in each formula unit is 12 oxygens. So 12 oxygens per formula unit is what we have going on in this compound. And if we've got three of those, well, three formula units times 12 oxygens per formula unit is going to give us a total of 36 atoms of oxygen in three formula units of this compound. That's four times three, 12 in one formula unit, and a total of 36 in three of the formula units. Pretty straightforward, but useful and very important application of interpreting a chemical formula. In question four here, we're asked which statements are true regarding an atom with 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 10 electrons. Select all that apply. And if we look at the choices below, these talk about things like the net charge on the atom, whether it's a cation, anion, or neutral, the identity of the atom, which element it corresponds to, sodium, neon, etc., and other things about the number of subatomic particles in the nucleus versus outside of the nucleus, so on and so forth. So the first thing I actually want to do is take a look at the number of protons and recall that that corresponds to the atomic number. And so for this atom, the atomic number is 11. And we can jump over the periodic table and see that atomic number 11 corresponds to sodium. So this corresponds to an atom of sodium. And so indeed, we can check here the element in question is sodium. Now, if the element in question is sodium, we can immediately rule out neon here, right? The, the element cannot possibly be sodium and neon, so let's go ahead and rule that one out. If we look now at the number of protons versus the number of electrons, protons are positively charged, subatomic particles, electrons are negatively charged, and so we have an excess of positive charge in this cation. It's got a positive charge overall. It is actually a cation, so this is a true statement. The atom has a net positive charge, and naturally then it cannot possibly be neutral, and it cannot possibly have a negative charge. So we can rule those out immediately as well. All right, the number of subatomic particles inside and outside of the nucleus. Well, let's look first at the protons and neutrons. These are nucleons that are found in the nucleus of the atom, and there are 23 of them in total. And so there are many more than just 11 subatomic particles in the nucleus of this atom, so we can cross that out. And this last one that we haven't looked at yet, this last statement says the atom has 10 subatomic particles located outside of the nucleus of the atom. And here, indeed, if we look at the number of electrons, there are 10 electrons. These are located outside of the nucleus. Electrons, remember, orbit the nucleus. And so, yes, indeed, this atom has 10 subatomic particles located outside the nucleus of the atom. So there we go, using the counts of protons, neutrons, and electrons to infer information about an atom.